Live? Live now. Nice. Yeah. Are, they, are they hot mics? <laughs> These are hot the mics. The hottest. Yes. The hottest Scalding. of mics. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House. Yet another week of solving solving the world's problems. That's right. I'm glad I'm glad we could do it. Yeah. Someone's got to do it, One right? Girl Scout cookie at a time. <laughs> Dude, you are crushing those some more Girl Scout cookies. I'm assuming- I think your Girl Scout crushed them all. Dude, I came in here yesterday, and she was, she was out in the pallet house playing video games, crushing Girl Scout cookies. I was like, hey. Those things are great. Yeah, you having, you having fun today? Like, oh, yeah. Mom said clean my room. I finished. I'm good. My blood sugar's fine. <laughs> yeah. Come here. Let me prick your finger. Her yeah. Eyes twitching. One eye's twitching. Right. Dude, the Boy Scouts just get their ass handed to them on that level. What do you mean? They just don't like, have the product. Oh, they do. <laughs> like the oh, Girl dude. Scouts and got the year, Girl Scouts cookies. Boy Scouts are like popcorn. You want some popcorn? They, or some? they slang popcorn. <laughs> so every we, year, I look at the regional Boy Scout guy and he's like, "Are you selling popcorn?" I give him this little twitch in my eye. I'm like, "Motherfucker, <laughs> quit asking me that." Join forces with these motherfuckers or come up with candy bars I or something. To, I, I try to buy it and it's so overpriced. And it's, that's the and kicker. It's garbage. It's, so it's not expensive. that good. I know. Like, and even though they've like doubled the price of Girl Scout cookies, it's still like way less. Th- like yeah. the cheapest thing you get at the Boy Scouts is like twelve fifty or something, yeah. and it's like six pieces of candy. You're Girl like, Scout what are we doing? Cookie. Girl Scouts have it on lock to where they've made it a part of society. Where oh like, yeah, oh, it's just that time of year. I'm gonna go ahead and get my shit, my girl, my fix for this year. So is it only once a year? I feel like it's all yeah, the time it's, now. It's once a year, and yeah. they they had to go so far as to get a second baker. They did. Like a East Coast Baker and a West Coast Baker. Now they had to change the names on some of them. So you can't get them like in November, like at the grocery. I thought they sold them at the grocery stores and stuff now. It's all just. I could not be to wrong. my knowledge, no. No, not. not the Girl Scout ones. They've so kept it's that still exclusive. officially, you got to go to the dealer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, you don't want to buy it from some secondhand dealer because you never know what. They could be cut by Keebler Elves. And right. Exactly. It's never, yeah. it's never the right potency. Yeah. I mean, I see Watered people. Watered down chocolate and shit. Yeah, like, this Thin Mint's not very minty. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I man, see we people cut it on with Facebook baby being like, I'm looking for Girl Scout. Like, people are fiending. Oh, they are. Like, I'm like, how do you not know anyone? I feel like everybody's throwing it at well, you. Well, just that every store you go to and they're late, all sitting outside. They're there. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And that's the hustle, man, because I feel so bad walking past a little kid. So I will be going. Especially a little girl. Yeah. So I'll go I don't know. In. I'm sexist I go, that way. I go yeah. in like a different entrance. Like if I see them, yeah. I'll park somewhere else at the Home Depot just so I can come out like the contractor entrance. You know what gets me that way is the Christmas bell ringer. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm just not helping the world if I'm I don't like drop a, a dollar. Remember me? I was here just a little bit ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a selfie while I'm here That's dropping a nice yeah. fiver. Yep. <laughs> you take proof, photo <laughs> proof. Yeah. You yeah. roll back be like, so you remember this right here, friend? That's right. Come out. That's why I high five every one of them. So well, they you come, never forget. <laughs> I'm like, I just do the high five your ass. Except for me, I come out of Kroger an hour later, somebody knew. Son yeah. of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. You didn't tell your boy yeah, he about didn't. me? He didn't talk he didn't about t- me. He didn't talk I know about he me. told you. I know <laughs> he told you. Yeah. I just dropped the humbug on him and keep walking. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. They, they know what that means. It's the only time of year that that word has any like real power. Yeah. Humbug. And they're like, all right, well, that Scrooge ain't paying. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're damn right I'm not. Man, they got, I mean, how much more money must they bring in than the Boy Scouts? I mean, the Boy oh, Scouts tons. around here have started doing mulch. Really? They leave a they leave a thing outside. That's a scam, dude. House. They don't do no mulch. <laughs> yeah, it's four dollars a bag, which I don't know if that's good or bad. That's bad. It's bad. It sounds like Boy Scout prices then. Yeah. And they come over and they drop off all the bags of mulch, and then you get to spread them yourself. Huh. My neighborhood pool Great is doing deal. that this spring. They're doing it. I think it's five dollars a bag. Really? But they deliver it to your house, which I've asked around. Some of the elderly people are like, "Yeah, if I don't have to go get that shit and load it." Well, yeah, I mean, the I Boy Scouts that. bring it at four. But we bag, did the camp cards bag last year. Bad mulch is the worst. It is. Really? I don't think I've ever had bad mulch. Bag. Oh, bag mulch. I was like, bad mulch? How do you how do you no, screw up mulch? No, you can. You get the free shit from the dump, and that shit is full of oh, yeah. three musketeers wrappers. and <laughs> looks real good, yeah. honey. Yeah. I like forever, how though. the cigarette yeah. butts are around <laughs> yeah, the walkway. Exactly. Yeah. sharp. Yeah, it was a good deal. What did you say y'all did? Y'all camp did? cards, which is like that card where it's like... It's got deals at all the stores. They're you like five ten percent off or yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, like if you use every deal, it's like five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's for an five amazing bucks. deal if you really use them all. And if you don't, you don't slide it. it in the back of your wallet and never see it again until yeah, it expires, four years. Up. Yeah, yeah. That's how everything. 
They're and, awesome. They had like a Bass Pro 20% off or something. So we went to Bass Pro and we were like, hey, shitheads, while you're here, yeah. you get 20% off. Just pay me five bucks. And they were, it was like. Oh, you the, sold them like yeah. crazy outside. Yeah. You sold out of them probably. Yeah. That's brilliant. You want 20, 20% off? Oh, not really. It's a Boy Scout thing and it's five bucks. It's well, five plus, bucks. I was, I'm in. Yeah. Plus, I'm thinking like. Decline and you clientele. get a thick burger, dude. Later, <laughs> you win, win. Sweet frog. <laughs> Plus, I'm thinking like the clientele that goes to Bass Pro are pro Boy Scouts. They, yeah, they are. A lot of them. Got I, some I kids used to be. Yeah, yeah. I take a couple from my family. That's yeah. awesome. Smart. Genius. Yep. I dig we made it. a bunch of money that way. Yeah, that works. It's like the Girl Scouts were selling in uh, it was Cali. In Colorado, yeah, outside of all of the the pot dispensaries. Brilliant. And apparently, those girls cleaned up. Yeah, you got to have some cool ass parents when you're like, let's go over to Doctor Green Thumb and sell some <laughs> Girl Scout cookies, <laughs> or just know? smart, or some baked parents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm already going there anyway, oh, oh, yeah. Cindy. <laughs> yeah, I was headed out anyway. Can we talk about the fact that John Cena is still wrestling? He's not just doing make a wishes. He's Make, awesome no, wrestling. The dude is in tons of amazing movies. Yeah. Like, he's voices. Like, he does not need to do this, but he's still showing up to fucking fireworks and music. And, and jean shorts. Yes. It's what he does, man. John Cena, he's the man. He is the man. Like, he absolutely is. He's definitely, like, the best guy we have. Yeah. You know, I know we've talked about it before, but it's... He is awesome. It's mind-blowing. He's done more Make-A-Wish wishes dude than anyone else and it's not he did even that close bull. what was the bull ferdinand he was that yeah guy. yeah he's been in a bunch of them yeah he's a good dude man he, he loves like apparently when he goes into town the first thing he does is find out like where's the children's hospital and who has said they want you know wishes and then he just makes them happen like goes out of his way to do it yeah That's, when you hear about guys like that i mean it's just like crap i'm not doing nearly enough and then I, and then i kind of play a game in my head like what would he have to do to to undo all of those awesome things right one because to me make a wish is about as good like if you're doing stuff for the needy kids like it doesn't get much better than that that's right i'm gonna be doing a make a wish walk i'll be i'm gonna be pimping out the listeners in about a month's time oh really yeah i've got a big big make a wish walk that i'm gonna be doing try to raise some money for all the kids here in virginia it's like make a wish has the national but then they have like, yeah local more localized yeah and i've gotten a little more involved with them and i just know that i know there's 132 kids right now that they can't grant the wishes just in virginia right oh i believe it and i'm like damn dude like we gotta raise some cash so, yeah more well, that's like that story from um m4k where they had to have that meeting about who couldn't get what and yeah then when m4k showed up with a check they were like Never mind. Everybody yeah. gets it. Yeah, we're actually like, going to really do it. That's really cool. Your kidneys get drained today. Like, yeah. that's yeah. good. Thank you. <laughs> you going to wear your ankle weights during the walk? I don't have ankle weights. I got the what? Miata. I don't have to compensate <laughs> for anything anymore. <laughs> I look I look beast. Dude, I almost wrecked that Miata this weekend. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah, so you took it on a road too trip. Too much power. <laughs> too much power. I was, I was taking young. Someone didn't see you. I Someone was, in a. Mercury Sable didn't see your ass. <laughs> <laughs> they checked I, the blind spot. You weren't there. It, exactly. I definitely just took it on its first major road trip, like down to uh, to Raleigh. And that is a sketchy feeling when a semi goes by you and you literally can't Blows see your it. Blows your ass. Like you're, the tires, yeah. the top of the tire is like where your head is. You're like, huh, that's a little sketchy. You're on a motorcycle. Yeah. You are. And I went down there and during that crazy 20 bucks says that, that truck driver was like, out of my way, homo. <laughs> <laughs> He wouldn't be wrong. I was in his way. <laughs> <laughs> but that was one thing. It's I like did. a motorcycle without any of the cool factors. That's exactly right. But it does feel like it. Like when you're sitting there and like all the lines of traffic on the highway are going, you're like, I can just dart around these fuckers and shoot in that little gap up there. Yep. Yeah. The gap's it's Lane so Lane looks small. all huge. Yeah. yeah. It, it really does have that motorcycle feel. I get that it doesn't have any of the cool, but I did, enjoy, but I did almost kill uh, young Jimmy. I was down in Raleigh, and I, I, I saw him, and, and I took him out to show him what's up. I was so all, the other friend had to stay at home while you guys went for a ride? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll come one, pick you up, and we'll go for a ride. We'll be back. Yeah. Well, he was like, I don't, I don't drink coffee. I was like, oh, I'm me out of run. Like, let's get coffee, young Jim, and put him in the car. And we were coming around a turn, and I decided to, to downshift and show him. Show him what he can do in the turns. Got sideways a little. Dude, I went so sideways so fast. And then I was like, it's okay. You just compensate. Overcompensated the other way. Spun it. I was like, I suck at this. Like, I, I'm so out of practice. Did you, did you like, literally lose control and, like, come all the way around? Or No, I was able to save it. But, like, I went 
you know, 90 degree yeah. and then spun it back 90 degree and then straight. And if you have any control over your car, you can go 90 and then you go right back to straight. That's not what I did. I overcompensated back. I was like, okay. Do you tell him that's exactly how you planned it out? <laughs> I, I played it as cool as I could, but right. he was like, he's but like, he could smell the shit in your pants. He's like, well, you, you, you saved it. At You're least. not fooling me with that brown shit running down your leg. <laughs> why are you, why are you crying in your Miata? Yeah, it just was so close. I saw all my future Miatas just go by me like a flash. Oh, uh, it was it was awkward. Would not have been good if you totaled your new toy the first weekend out in it. Uh, it would have been bad. I've barely driven that thing. It's been like weeks now that I've had it, and I've driven it like three times. Is there radio in it yet? Radio's in it. Radio's oh yeah, in you it. got the radio. Yeah, some very. So do you, you got enough speakers? You can hear it when you're top down rolling. I rode the top down. It was fifty degrees, and I had the top down the whole way back from Raleigh, and I could hear everything. Yes, nice, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, Darius Rucker sounds real strong on it. Of course he sure. does. <laughs> That's all I know. And you, you can sure even, it wasn't share. What do you want people to think of you when they ride by? Darius he Rucker just give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, that obviously. I, that Darius I got a half Rucker. full Dixie cup, motherfucker. That's what I want you to think. <laughs> like, I'm thinking positive. I was thinking Dixie chicks, but you say Darius Rucker, whatever. Well, you know, I'm on the air. I got to maintain a certain level of persona. It was right. the Dixie chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson Phillips lead in. Yeah. Hold on to. No, nah, it was it was not that bad. <laughs> I saw the sun. <laughs> yes, uh, Ace and of Base. I opened up my eyes. I saw the sun. Life is demanding. Oh, were you there? <laughs> yeah. I was riding shotgun. I was, shi- I was shifting. Yeah, we know the rules. Right? <laughs> we covered that last <laughs> <Yeah>. week. <laughs> the old two hand shift. I'll just drink my beer. I just walk into it with that car, though. I get it. But No, I'm excited. I'm glad you got it. Running, I am too. Running strong, not leaking nothing, but not about to fall apart. Nothing's leaking. There's nothing. You you no know that I am alluded to something. There's a little little issue with What's it. What's it doing? Uh, damn, I don't know. I don't. You you got to tell me what this is like. So sometimes when you gun it, the supercharger doesn't kick in, and I feel the power of the standard Miata. That's not good. It is awful. Really. But if I let off the gas and drop it again, that supercharger kicks in and it's off to the races. I think there's a loose. I think the belt. Got a Going mouse to, sleeping yeah. on the job under that hood? That's That'd exactly be my guess. It it's the belt. Because everything else is working. But, man, when that supercharger doesn't happen and you gun it, I'm like, who would drive one of these? <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> but then when the supercharger does kick in, I spin it out of control. So I, I got to find the middle ground. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. It's tough out there. And the, Well, the buying a, what, what do we decide, 24-year-old car? I mean, you're going to have some... Uh, hiccups to uh, iron out yeah i gotta figure it out i'll be taking it over to ely motors putting it up on the lift seeing what's uh jobs your credit jobs your credit what's what we'll get this thing buttoned up yeah but i've been on the road for i was doing the math when i was outside right before we went on the air i've been home two actual days of the last 10 you haven't seen you in two weeks yeah it's been it's been crazy man it's been a, a lot of travel because that's why we had uh last last week we recorded a week anyone, before, yeah, we recorded two, so I because I knew I was going to be gone, and I'll be damned. all for work, work and fun. You know, it was like like a, a mixture of the two. We went down to New Orleans for our national sales meeting this year. New Orleans. Dude, you just went to Nevis with work. Like you get to do a lot of cool work stuff. If if you don't want to be home, yeah, it's it's super cool. But I want to be home. So yeah, there's, there's some some tension there. But no, dude, it was. It, You've been to New Orleans, or no, you haven't yeah. been to New Orleans? No, I've been, been, I've been multiple times. Plus, like, for you, I would think, like, your wife likes to have a good time, so she probably doesn't want to hear about you going out of town and having a blast. I know. And I, I, I tail-ended this, had this huge work trip, and then was home for a day, and then hit the road in the Miata. To go visit friends and have <laughs> more fun. Phone party. <laughs> yeah. So. You got the kids? You good? You guys good? Everybody's alive? I'm all tired of y'all. I'm about to get out of here. <laughs> And it's like, boy, I've been here for one day, and I'll tell yeah. you, you kids are needy. Yappity, yappity, yappity. I'm getting With out With the here. dad this and dad that. I get it. Yeah. yeah. See you in a week. I'm awesome. But <laughs> yeah. I got to go. All right. Well, check you later, kids. Don't eat all, Don't eat that whole apple at once. You're going to be here for days. Right. You guys have not learned anything in the five days I was gone. Let's just move along. I'll see you in another five. No, that, going Hon, to New what Orleans. are you teaching them? <laughs> <laughs> You need to up your mom game. Come on. Yeah. I can't yeah. be here all the time. <laughs> Nothing like coming home and complaining about the new words they right. learned. 
What, when did they pick up this <laughs> shit? I never said yeah. that word. That's, that's not good. Yeah, New Orleans is a dope spot. It's a, it's definitely kind of a, a shithole, though, right? Like, so I was I was talking. Do you remember the Dan Dan Dan, Dan the Shoe Shine Man? Oh yeah, the story. So if you haven't had a chance, go back and listen to Dan Dan the Shoe Shine Man. Episode. That was one of our earlier episodes. It was an early episode, and it was it was the last time I was in New Orleans. I got scammed by Dan Dan the Shoe Shine Man, and I'm talking to one of my buddies that's down there. And he's like, yeah, I went to that Cafe Dumont and got some, uh, got some beignets and got some coffee. He's like, I'm walking back, and I'll be damned if this, this guy doesn't come up to me and start saying, I bet I could tell you where you got those shoes. And he starts going, and I'm like, oh, no, about, <laughs> about two blocks from Cafe Dumont. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, let me guess, big, older black guy, a little bit of a limp. He's like, yeah. You know him. I was like, so you met Dan Dan the Shoe Shine Man. He's like. It's funny you say that. Yeah, this guy comes over. He starts going through this spiel, and then at some point he sprays some shit on my shoes. I'm like, oh, now you're in. Now you got to pay him. Yeah, like he shined your shoes. Do you? Like, no, you don't. Right. Dan's so damn good at it. Yeah. That by the time it's done, you're like, all right. So his whole scam is he comes up to you and he says, I bet, I bet I could tell you where you got those shoes. And you're like, you can't tell me where I got these shoes. And like he keeps making small talk with you. And then he's like, so I'll bet you five bucks. I can tell you. And then he drops the old, you got them on your feet. Ah! And then you're like, <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. Like, that doesn't count. And then in the the hustle of all of that, he starts squirting some shit on your shoes and shining them up. And you're like, dude, I didn't ask you to, what are you doing right now? And he's like, I'm Dan Dan the Shoe Shine Man, one of the most famous people in all New Orleans. And he starts shining your shoes. And then he's like, it'll be 10 bucks for the shoe shine. Just scams you. Yeah, he worse. just. He just gets you. But my boy got caught. What do you think a cat rolls in a day doing that hustle? I mean, he's got. If he's been doing it this long, if you Google, like if you put him in YouTube, you see him like 20 years ago running the same damn hustle. A young Dan Dan. Yeah, young Dan Dan when he didn't have the whole limp. (laughs) And it's it's crazy. The two two scams down there, there's the hat scam, which I'll never quite understand how that one works. They like blow a whistle and the dude looks like he's kind of official. but Blow the whistle. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he blows the whistle and starts pointing at you and screaming. And if you acknowledge him because you think he looks official, then like one way or another, he'll end up selling you a hat, and some cheesy dollar hat. We got hustled on. We got hustled on hats up in New York City. Uh, we went up there ten years ago for a long weekend, and uh, it was in February, it was freezing cold. And we went out bar hopping with another couple, and we went every between every bar we went to, people were selling toques left and right, and just. My wife ended up buying like five different toques. Oh God, she got hooked. Yeah, he means beanies. Beanies. I was trying toques. to be cool. I know, like but I like it. I like it. I didn't. I see. I wasn't going to say nothing. It made perfect sense to me. Yeah, skull caps. Yep, that's the one. But yeah, man, I, I find New Orleans to be a bit of a shithole. Like, but I've always also spent. I've only been in Mardi Gras, so. And that's the. Pro- I've spent most of my time on Bourbon Street, so it's like I have this very limited view. Downtown is New a Orleans shithole. Is. The surrounding New Orleans is, I like. I like all the the parishes, as they call them. Yes. And I've, I've been down there for uh, Mardi Gras, and like, they do a lot of cool family stuff, and I've had a blast. I've actually so had, when you I've get had, off bourbon, it's nice. Yes. I've had more fun at the parades and stuff that go through the neighborhoods than downtown and on Bourbon Street, where the debauchery is. It's just the debauchery, know, it's, it's, a, it's aggressive debauchery. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Like, it is. That's it's the problem. They so come many over, people. They just start pouring. The, the, the shot tube girls in some of those places yeah. will just come up and literally just put a tube in your mouth. And then you're like, what the fuck just happened? Get that like, drop. You just spent $6. You're yeah. like, what? I had one come up to me one night. I had just told one of the one of the coworkers, I was like, she was like, look, I'm ready to get out of here. And I was like, hey, it's 11 o'clock. That's like my... I'll, I'll be glad to walk you back. She's yeah. like, oh, thank you so much. As soon as I turn around, one of those damn shot girls comes up, takes four shots out, jams them in my mouth, and I'm just like, Bleh. all of a sudden I take four. Then she hit, puts four shots in this other girl's mouth next to me. Forty two fifty, please. Next thing I know, she's like, that's $40. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Whoa. Like, I just got bent. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? Forget it. Here's the money. And I go walking out with the other girl, like that. I'm walking home. Yeah, I'm not kidding. We got about halfway home, and then she started walking me home. Like the first five you. blocks, I was like in charge, like all is well. 
And then next thing I know, I'm like, is that pizza over there? These ankle weights are so heavy. Yeah. It all got blurry. I I shouldn't have worn two pair. (laughs) And we got back. I was like, thank you for the walk home. Yeah. (laughs) I went to my room. It was crazy. But that the next day we woke up and I didn't have any work stuff till like five o'clock that night. And I was like, I want to get out of Bourbon Street. I want yeah. to see something else. And I'd always heard of like the muffalata sandwich. It's like supposed to be the sandwich of, of New Orleans. And I was like, I've got to find these things. So I laid there in bed and I did like the keep Googling 10 best muffalatos and like read all the articles until you find like the three places that pop up in yeah. every one and then start taking the deep dive. I finally found this place. I was like, I got to go to the Cochon Butcher. And like just got up and walked. And I mean, no joke, after about five blocks, I was like, oh, New Orleans is kind of cool. Like yeah. After I got away from all the bullshit, that sandwich was amazing, what too. What is it? My God. It's almost like it's like an Italian as far as the meats that are in it, because it's like your capicola, your salami, you know, all that stuff. But then they do an olive spread. I guess is the the key. It's like mushed up olive with a little bit of the vinegar, like so you kind of get that flavor in Italian, but predominantly olivey. Yeah, man, it was phenomenal. Really, that that was one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. Wow. Yeah, it was seriously that good. I was like, all right, never even heard of it. Glad I did that at least, you know. And then then went back. So then the only other thing that happened to me that was interesting that that we'll talk about when I was down in New Orleans. We were coming back after the last night, and there's this little bar that I had been to before the last time I was in New Orleans that I knew I liked. It's like this little dive bar. And I'm in there posted up, and I'm hanging out and ordered a bunch of food, drinking some beers. And all of a sudden, the bartender's like, I have a phone call for Brendan. Phone call for Brendan. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, that happens? That's right. Like, Because I've only seen only that. Only Bart Simpson did Yeah, that. exactly. That's what I thought. And I was like. I've been going to bars for 20 years. This has never yeah. happened to me. Like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, I'm I'm Brendan. There. She's like, you have a phone call? Hands me the phone. It's some girl that had been there like like an hour prior with our group. Uh-huh. And she was like, oh, I knew you'd still be there, which is kind of insulting. But, I mean, good <laughs> choice. <laughs> good choice. You know, at 2.30 in the morning, just call the bar and ask for Brendan. And wow. She's like, yeah, I lost my ID somewhere in there. Sure enough, look around and on the floor. There's this girl's ID. Are you, that, I'm not kidding. That is insane. Yeah, and it one it that she called, and you were actually there. Two, it was actually there. Like, yeah, just oh, lost in this. Like, how did she know what area of the bar she even like? How? I just went back to if where I lose I'd been something. Sitting. That means <laughs> I don't know where the hell I lost it. It was within five feet of five feet of where I'd been sitting, just eating nachos and shit. So, like, I went over and I looked down. And I was like, oh, no one else saw it. No one saw it. It was just sitting there. That is crazy. And she had to be on a plane, you know, at 9 a.m. She's like, yeah. I kind of need this thing. So like any any hero, I said, well, I'm going to finish my nachos and I just got a <laughs> beer. So it's going to be a little yeah. while before you you get it back. But sure enough, met her at the hotel, gave her, her ID back. But it was that was a feeling that I've never had. I've always wanted that to happen. Yeah. You know, I that is crazy. Phone call for yeah, Brendan. <laughs> That's me. I don't think I've ever had that. And like I said, I've spent a lot of times in some bars. I spent, I mean, years at <laughs> like, and no one's ever called me at the bar. So I'm saying it doesn't. It doesn't happen. I mean, I, that used to be absolute commonplace. Yeah, that was know? in every sitcom. Exactly. So I yeah. felt I felt like Norm up in a bar yeah. that I've been in twice in my whole <laughs> life. <laughs> of all the bars you've been in, more than twice. It happened in that bar. It happened in that bar. Halfway across the country. Jumanji in New Orleans. It's now my, my official, like... That's your spot. That's my spot. Nice. That's the one. Shout man. out to Jumanji. Yeah, Jumanji. The the, the place. I just be. saw that in the theater. Oh, how was it? It was good. The new I one? I really enjoyed the it. new Jumanji? Yeah. More than I thought I would. they make one a few years ago? Um, no? I don't recall. But Kevin Hart's a funny bitch. That dude cracks me oh, up. Oh, it's Kevin Hart in there? Oh, yes. Kevin Hart fucking with The Rock the whole time. Oh, but they're playing like other people, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the, more modern, like it's a video game. But they really, they did a good job. I wasn't Kevin expecting Hart right it. There. Kevin Hart's on TV. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting it. They, and they did a much better job than I, than I was expecting. Take Little the Man only, with you? Is yes. That why? It's the better than the old pit, one? Well, the old one's classic. But it's, it's fucking hilarious. Like... Angela and I are cracking up. And in the this old movie one was multiple, not funny. at least five to eight times. I was fucking laughing out loud. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
it was funny. And it was a, you know, good story and all that jazz, but it's got the same problem that I have with all other shit that we talk about, like the unnecessary shit bombs where Oh, where they're just saying shit for no there's reason. There's four shit bombs in the whole movie, and you're like, it would have been just as funny without it. Did yeah. he need to add that? There's kids in here. Yeah. Why did it need to be there? And yeah. I can't, I don't have the answer to that. Are they trying? Is there more value in making it PG-13? Yeah, Is that I the think problem? so. I think that's it. I think PG-13s historically do better than PG. Okay. And R historically does worse. Right. So well, you you want to get to that you want to get over the hump. So they make this kids movie and then they finagle everyone into being in the theater and then they throw a couple cuss words in just to get it the 13 rating. I guess I so. Guess. I mean I guess that's calculated, right? It's got to be. You don't want to take it over I mean, the top. It's blatantly clear that they're being thrown in for no reason. Yeah. It's I mean it's blatantly they been, clear. They they never cuss and then right. they just come out with a shit out of the nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like when Shrek called Donkey a fucking bitch. Yes. I remember that. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know. You're like, okay, that's it's your seems... big ass fucking teeth. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wow. That... It's, it's fun... out of character, Shrek. Yeah. It's funny you bring that up because I happened to be flipping around TV this afternoon and saw uh, Logan was on and I'd never seen it. And I turn it on and he immediately started stabbing motherfuckers in the face <laughs> with his uh, yeah. with his talons, his fucking right. claws, and blood's going everywhere. And I'm like, what is going on here? And I turn it, I hit the info, and it's like rated R. And I'm like, okay, yeah. first off, every they've made 47 of these movies. They're all PG-13, and there's never blood. It's comic book movies. These are for children and adults. There's a child in the movie who's slaughtering other dudes. I watched like 10 minutes of it, and I'm just like, my boys were in another room. I was like, I got to change the channel because they're going to walk in here and watch this eight-year-old kid take her talons and and ram them in some guy's throat. I do think that a part of that is in response to how well Deadpool did. I was about to say the exact same thing. Yeah. That's exactly... They had to darken Which I think up. is probably one of the best oh superheroes now, ever made. I love Deadpool, and I think Deadpool has a place, but you've already established in the X-Men world... What you are. What right, you are. I agree. And you're, you're a kid's movie. And yeah, Logan was a deviation from the formula. Yes. But yeah. in response... To Deadpool, and I right. remember, but see, I remember hearing that Logan was a good movie. That's why I kind of stopped on it for a few minutes. And then once I saw him literally stabbing people in the head, I was like, "Oh, I think I remember hearing something about this." And yes, it was radar. But I was just shocked. I'm like, "I've already have established that. this is a X Men." Yep. And and there's a, and the one with the kid in it, like literally the one with the the kid pre, doing all, yeah, yeah the preteen. Yeah. In defense of the the storyline, though, wasn't. When he first became Wolverine, wasn't he like more of a badass and not necessarily a good dude? And then it was only later. And this, so maybe the movie intentionally is darker so that you can see his progression. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm looking too much into it. Well, I'm, I yeah, think no one else. They're like, oh, we didn't write it like that, but yes, 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 we'll you save that it. for Comic Con next year. Well, what that kid said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly. It's a story arc. It's yeah. a character arc. I think you can do that. I mean, obviously, in every other one, he was slaying people left and right. They're just. Wasn't showing it. It was a shing, yeah. shing, shing. Yeah. And it was assumed that he was fucking motherfuckers up. Like when people get shot in, you know, Star yeah. Wars and whatever, like you don't see it. You just know, like. Yeah. Dude people, got murked. Yeah. 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 That dude is out for 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. He's exactly. been stunned. Yeah. That was another thing that was cool about um, Jumanji is like they land in the island and Jack, Jack Black gets eaten by a fucking hippo instantly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> eaten and dead. And he goes, bling, bling, and falls out of the sky. They've all got lives. It was pretty cool. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's like a real game. Yes, like it was a very video game. Yeah, they even had like extras that only said certain things. It was like, hey guys, welcome to the island. This is your mission. And they'd be like, who are you? And he's like, Hey guys, welcome to the island. <laughs> this is your mission. You're like, oh, this is a guy in a game. He's only says certain like a, a repeating line. And I think the I think like the Rock plays a girl or something. Like the Rock doesn't play a girl. Jack Black plays a girl. He's the only one that plays a different sex. But the rest of them, it's like he was a nerd. Now he's yeah. huge. Oh yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Right. That's hilarious. I got to see it now. I mean, it's, the Rock. Dude, funny. I mean, you gave it a deli. It kind of makes me want to see it. Yeah, the Rock, should. Jack Black, and Kevin Hart. That's a good dude, trio. Kevin Who's Hart. Who's the girl is in crippling it? me? Isn't there a girl in it? Jack Black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just <laughs> talked about that. Yeah. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up, please. Stay with us. Um, I don't know her name, but there's well, there's actually because there, there's 
eight people. There's four at oh, the I beginning. Oh, I thought there was four. Okay. Well, it is, but they go into the game and they're totally different actors oh, okay. and actors. So there's four in the world and then there's four in the jungle. Gotcha. They spend most of the time in the jungle, so I don't know who the chick was. I don't okay. Know her name. So they like give you a character that kind of looks like you. It's like you have a remote control and you're like you start a game and it's like there's eight players like fucking Mortal Kombat and you pick the one and you turn into that bitch when you get in there. Like the nerd turned into the rock. Yes. Yeah, and someone got stuck being Jack Black, which sucks. Yeah. yeah. Like you show up. Like, right. Don't. One of the chicks did. <laughs> oh, He's like, I know anthropology. What the hell is anthropology? <laughs> what does that mean? Like, it's pretty funny. <laughs> All right. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, you, got, you should. You got me sold on the thing. It sounds like. I mean, just know that there's a few shits in there if you're having the kids. What do y'all tell the kids when it comes to that kind of Jacob stuff? Jacob is at this point, like, he knows. Like, my like, kids are like starting to be like, oh, that's a bad word. And I'm like, Look, that's not a bad word. That's an adult word. Right. You're going to hear that, yeah. but you don't need to say it. It's a when different you're... angle. I kind of can deal well, with like, that. Well, like, Jacob will turn a song down when he knows a bad word's coming because I want him to. Yeah. And he'll turn it back up when it's gone. I don't like to say bad word just because it's, we all cuss. It's not a bad Every word. That's a cusses. great point. No, it's a good point. So and like, when you put you that like... on there, then it's like, ooh, I want to use that a yeah. little. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess adult word kind of might do that, too. But bad word. You know you're being bad, and like when you're around your buddies, you want to be yeah, bad. Yeah, So, kind of get that. But I don't want my kids to think mom and I are bad, you know, or you guys are bad because they hear you say shit. Like, you're not bad people because you say shit. Like, well, Jacob's here during football on Sundays. He hears He it, knows what's know? up. He just knows. <laughs> he does. And, but you, that's not, you know. You, and we play music in the it. car, and some of his music yeah. mixed in with some of mine, and. He knows which ones. He's like, Dad, that one's explicit. We sh- can't listen to this. You need yeah. to stop it. My girls, you need to tell me before I know. Yeah. They hit pause, hit pause, hit pause. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you. Dude, my girls sing lyrics around here that I know they don't know what the hell they're saying, but they walk around singing lyrics, and I'm like, they are not doing that. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Like, no. Yep. Pop music is bad with that kind of stuff, I especially know. on the girl side. Like, yeah, yes. and that's the side they're yeah. listening to. It's like, I feel like. For their, you know, the ninth birthday, they're gonna be like, you know what I'd like? I'd like some 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 really trashy tattoos down yeah. my arm, and you know, a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be ratchet. We no, did. you're fucking not. I'm gonna Stop be what ratchet. you're doing That's right awesome. now. We happened to be in the car Sunday at noon, and the top forty songs or whatever was it was number one, and it was some song I, I'd never heard, and Hel- and Helen was like, oh, I've heard this song a million times, and it was a girl singing about rules or something. And she was like, she's like, that song's actually not really appropriate, you know, for a lot of kids. And she was like, I, when I hear these songs, I don't really listen to them. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what's, what's she talking about? And she was like, it's like a bunch of different rules. And she was like telling me the rules. I was like, oh, yeah, that is kind of weird. Like, <laughs> but it's just, it's the most popular song in the country. You want to get up in this. These are the rules. Yeah. yeah. And that's it's yeah. like, don't, don't yeah. be under him or. If you're under him, you won't be over him or something. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just all this stuff that's like. That's the kind of shit they just walk around the house singing. Though, the thing is, is they're know. smart because there's a ton of subtle things that only adults yes. get that they don't get. Like yes. this song where it's like, they always want to come, but they never want to leave. Yeah. That song. Yeah. Yeah. X is yeah. And the, uh, that one. Yeah. Then that's the kind of shit I got to hear them singing. It right. just freaks me out man like, yeah when you're X's little girl, and O's. yeah when your little girl's <laughs> singing that yeah and they're just happy as a pig in shit just be bobbing around singing yep. this stuff and i'm like oh, always oh, want to come and you're like oh God. have you ever bought um any of the kids bought versions of any of these songs my mom plays they it are for Jacob. so weak dude. they are weak they look like chipmunks oh. and they're fucking corny as dude, shit dude we have a few of them and like they change like some of the weak stuff to the weakest. I know. Like, <laughs> Dude, they're <you're laughs> like, so horrible. You're like, like, why can't you get a normal person to make that yeah, shit? Yeah, it's so bad. Yeah. And my kids love it. That's like, it's like do. you didn't, you took it from a PG-13 song to a G- minus yeah, song. Why yeah. couldn't, isn't there a PG version? Yeah. yeah there's got to be something. That, like, look, you're allowed to kiss, just not the pussy. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, hey, come on, just change the words yeah. just a little. Yeah, yeah. they go overboard. They do. Hey, have you you uh, reached down in there for me? I'd love to uh, get my hands on a beer down there. I got something today that I'm very interested to see if these people even make good beer. Because I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah, I'm not allowed so to bring beer. beer. I'm 0 for 2 the past two times. Yeah, you struck out twice. So today on my lunch break, I went out and picked up a beer. <laughs> Ooh, this looks like it could be a wiener. Well, well it falls into rem- his. Oh, man. God bless you. 
It um, falls into Ely's wheelhouse. It does, it's, it's because that reminded me that I found one at Capital Ale that I drank that I wanted to buy to bring in. Okay, and I, I like think the I'll sound do of that. that. But have you ever had one? It's like a dark half of bison. Have you ever had one of those? Oh, I've only had them a couple times at random breweries, and I love the concept. Yeah. Very good. Like I was almost at first. I was like, "You gave me the wrong one." Like, what? It, what is this? I wanted the hefeweizen. And it oh, it really poured like dark, like dark. Really dark. Yeah. yeah. See, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it was. I'd love to try that. So the whole reason I got I got this beer, I don't know anything about this brewery except for their root beer. So it's called Sprecher. Sprecher. What is it? How do you spell that? S P R E C H E R. Yeah. Sprecken is uh, speak. speak. Yeah. Well, so Sprecher makes a root beer, and you know, I go into these like these these random places, and I buy up root beers. I don't know what it is. I just like buying root beers, and my favorite. I love a good root beer. Me too, and they're hard to find, like the right yeah the right amount of bite, right amount of everything, and I find that Sprecher is one of my absolute favorite root beers. So I was walking through the store today, and I saw that Sprecher has beers now too. Maybe they always had beer and then did root beer like as a, a secondary thing, but they're out of Wisconsin. I I know they have my favorite root beer, so I wanted I don't to know try. If I've one. ever had it. Where it, do you get it? The you can get beer. it at any kind of like like craft place that has craft sodas. Sprecher's okay. are usually there, and it's got like two crows on it or some shit. But so I wanted to try their their beer, and this is the the Heffy Weiss. So the Heffy Weiss. Don't know if it's going to be good. I'll give it a try now. Let me see what I it's got. It's a oh, so you have not had this. This is a four point three, which is. You want me to give my light. review? Oh, that's interesting. They went for the German style here. This is not an American style Hefeweizen. I don't know if you want to go first. You can do that. That's I fine. fucking love it. Oh, well, boom! <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That gets a four and a half. Oh, on the Richter a- scale. That's about as that's about as high as we can get. I've had one sip, but I'll, I'm, I'm four fine to four that. and a half. I'm just hesitant to give anything that. I think it's delicious. I think it's a I'll, yeah. It's definitely a German it's style. A fucking, it's Hefeweizen. a light Hefeweizen, but it still has all that flavor yeah. of the German, like the little bit of spice, yes. the little bit of. I drank the fuck out of these. Where finishes as soon as I drank it, I was like, "Where did you buy them?" Wegmans. Really? Yeah, How much was, were they? Uh, uh, it's ten dollars a six pack, so it is a little on the pricey side. But yeah, but I four, feel I feel like ten's good, even maybe up to twelve. It's when you get over the twelve dollar, and I'm like, yeah. now I'm paying more than two dollars a beer. This could get expensive. Four point three percent alcohol I see on here, which I'm a big fan of because that means it's lighter. Yeah, I can drink I can drink a handful of them and still be you drink a sixer. Yeah, and still be okay. Yeah, you know. No, this is delicious. Actually, yeah. Now that I'm having it. He's got a dude on a tractor just kicked up with his hat over his eyes. Doesn't look like he's it's about right tractoring at all. Yeah, but I still see that there's like tall grass there. So this motherfucker's taking a break prior to doing his yeah. job. Still got some wheat there to uh, knock down. Like I wouldn't mind seeing a dude laying on a tractor with a hat over his eyes if there's a clearly a beautifully mowed field. Uh, shouldn't he him. have a beer in his hand? One of these? Like he's chilling? No, that's a good one. Yeah, that is good. It definitely, so it's a German style, but not, like, overpowering. Yeah. German style, Hefeweizen, a little little bit of bite to it. Still got that pepper. But, yeah, like you said, a little bit refreshing. I would give it a four, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely in the four range, maybe four and a half. I would drink it, I would buy it, and I would tell a friend about it. I'm pretty excited about that. See, Troy, that, that's the trick. You bring in a Hefeweizen. I know, I this know. Guy, this guy drinks Hefeweizen. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the easy way. That's the way to a deli. I admit I cheated a little. Cheated hey, a, little. a W's a W. But now I'm feeling good about this. And I know that their root beer is my absolute favorite. So now I can say that Sprecher does a good job on beer and a good job on root beer. But I'll have to uh, search out that root beer. Yeah, I need to try that root beer because yeah. I do like a good root beer. I'll try to I'll try to pick some up before I come in here next time if I if I see them because I feel like I saw them at Total Wine. Nice. So I'll keep an eye out. My boys like root beer, and plus there's usually no caffeine in it, which yeah. is pretty good. That's why I started drinking a lot more around the house because yeah. it's something I can keep over there. And if they're like, I want some, it's like, yeah, we can we can split a root beer together. Yeah. But now they keep doing the whole look at my beer, Dad. I'm like, you shouldn't like beer. But yeah. It's, <laughs> It's it's hard to say it's not cool because the dad's always like, "Let me get a beer." Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You kind of yeah, they 
They know that's they cool. See There's that. no way around that. Yeah. If you have your kid throw you beers or get you beers at all, yeah, that's a wrap. Yep. Yep. Pretty have you have true. you tried the here have a sip with the kids yet? No, never. Dude, my wife pulls that shit, and I I I will not do it. I think it's. It, I mean, at a certain age, you can. But I've I've been out and had a draft beer, like a uh, like a microbrew, like something that I'm not even a big fan. I'm like, oh, uh, you guys want? They're like gonna this? hate this little one every time. That's awesome. That's really good. Yeah, that's I'm like, not a good sign. Like that's back. That's backfiring in my face. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Can I get a tall whatever yeah. my dad's got yeah. <laughs> with a lid and a straw, bendy straw? <laughs> got a bendy? Can I have one of those bendy straws? Swirly one. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know why, man, but after I drink two of these, I love watching the crazy straw. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, beer is, for most people, an acquired taste. I mean, it's pretty gross to most people on the first try. So I was like, here's how we'll prevent this from happening. Nope. Yeah, I remember the first beer my dad gave me, kept me off beer for another 12 years. Wow. So I remember nice. I was like, he gave it to me when I was like four years old, and I was like, <laughs> that was fucking disgusting. Yeah. Like, I will not. I'm never touching beer. Yeah. And then it was like, here, have this beer. Like, okay, I'll try it. And I still I remember thinking, yeah, it tastes exactly like I remember it tasting. This is awful. I remember liking the first one my stepdad gave me. I was like 14 probably, and he gave me half a beer while we were like playing darts out in the garage one day. And I probably just remember liking it because it was a cool experience. I hated it, and I hated cigarettes the first time. I hated them both. I was like, this is disgusting. I'll take more. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like that's gross, but I'm only gonna have four more of those and yeah. five more of those. Y'all all doing it? I'm in. <laughs> I'm not. I don't like it. Yeah, for the this, record, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, really cool. I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarettes are they make the the least sense out of everything. Yeah. Oh, you rake up smoke all day? That's awesome. That's what I want. Exactly. Oh, your breath's awful. Sign me up. Like that's in your prime. Like trying to get close to. Chicks, yeah, and, and you got cigarette breath, and you reek of cigarettes. Yeah, but you're only talking to girls who smoke at that age. There, and there was a time That's when true. It was my like, high school girlfriend, I both it was like you that. would flick it, and that would help get them. And yeah. you're like, oh, that dude's—he's <laughs> smoking. I remember. My, I love when I get in his car and it reeks of smoke. Yeah, it's awesome. My dad gave me some bad advice when I was young, and he he said, "Well, if they smoke, they poke." Yeah, and I'm like, 15 years old hearing that, and I'm like, oh, oh, well, that's the shortcut. Yeah. And so then it's like I'm only hanging out with girls that smoke because it's like my dad said it's true. Your and dad's a liar. <laughs> look, I will uh, let it be known. He was right. Yeah. It was a, it was a shortcut, like risk takers. Well, it's going to be somewhat true for sure. That's what I mean. It's, it's, it's a shortcut to the risk takers. Yeah. So at least you know they're making bad decisions. That is true. I mean, that's, that's really all you need. It's either neck tattoos. Or I was going to say, so if we're just using your dad's math, just find a meth head. And you can just <laughs> jump to the front line. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't end well for you. <laughs> yeah, getting hooked on cigarettes wasn't but so bad. I managed yeah. to get off of those. Dad, you'll never guess what I found. This, you know how you like smokers? Yeah. This chick smokes crack. I doubled down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She'll let me do anything. And has a neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't said no to anything. Right. I'm going to knock this one up. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to be a granddad? Yeah. God, I get, I'm trying to think of anything funny that rhymes with needles. It's like smoke, you poke, but needles. I can't. I can't come up with that. <laughs> right. I've been racking my brain. That's yeah. like the. That's like the bad advice I talked about a couple podcasts ago. My day used to give me like, why do you have one girlfriend? You should have more than one. Like, who tells their child that? Yeah. Like, me too, Dad. Me too. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh well, Dad's in their great advice. I'm sure I'll be handing out some to my sons uh, soon enough. Hey, speaking of great advice, taking Ubers is always good advice, right? Isn't that right, Troy? No. no. Ubers for the loss. I actually saw two stories come across my my, uh, my Uber-related? Uber-related stories Both this week. Both positive, I'm sure. Both pretty funny, I guess, in their own way. <laughs> one of which is a scam, and the other one is a guy who scammed himself. There was this guy who was down in uh, West Virginia, and he, he went down to party for the weekend. Well, that, okay. At West Virginia University, you're kind of you're kind of you're in the Wild West if you're in West Virginia anyway. Have yes, you ever, if you've ever been to West Virginia, like it's a diff- different country, it's a man. Different world, and it's not a bad thing, but it is it's behind the times to say the least. 
in a lot of respects. I'm actually yeah. surprised they have Uber. Actually, when I first started reading the story, I was like, huh. But then he said he was in Morgantown. So Which like, is like the I mean, metropolis. Yeah, if you're if you're in a college town, they definitely have, have yeah. Ubers. And that town is spread out a bit, so I could I could see it work. I'm surprised they have cell service. Like that place is just hilly as shit. Like <laughs> Yeah. It's all T Mobile. <laughs> but this dude apparently was like out at the bars with his buddies and he admits he goes, I drinking was, responsibly. Uh, he goes he goes, I admit like like I'm full blown blacked out. And he's like, My boys have left me. I'm by myself. And he's like, I'm piecing it together, you know. And he says, obviously, he, he got an Uber, so yeah. he was doing the right thing. So he had enough wherewithal to pull the app up and pull say, the app up, eject, yeah, get in the right car and everything. But I guess in his drunken ass stupor. That's he, the problem with Uber and Lyft and all these. You get to that point where you're ready to eject, and you're like, when you hit that eject button, you're mentally done there. And you're not, that's not the end of the road for you. You have, yeah. You still, have, there's still, there's Functioning still, there's to there's go still on. things you have to <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. Like, I mean, but you, and I've done it. Like, I've been like so drunk. I'm hitting eject and like, and then you're in your kitchen. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, sweet. And there's a pizza in the oven. Yeah. Things are looking up. <laughs> Who did all this? Yeah. <laughs> that Uber driver was dope. I'm giving him five stars. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you. But yeah, this guy apparently. Well, and probably, sorry to keep interrupting, but. I bet Uber, you know, we've talked about how Uber and Lyft have saved lives, but, like, I know we've gone out, like, and you know you're Ubering later, you're, like, balls to the wall. Like, I don't care. It takes the governor off. For yeah. Sure. yeah. You're, like, who ca- Shots? Yes. More beers? Yes. Let's, let's. I'm Ubering home. Yeah. What do I care? I don't care. We'll close this bar down. I don't have to be home at any time. Sounds about right. Well, this guy had that, that mentality was getting after it, got in the Uber, and made one critical error. He put his home address in and not the address not of the house. his college address? Not the address he was staying at with his buddies. They had driven in from New Jersey <laughs> earlier that day. Damn. And he says that it didn't occur to him like at all, and he said that when he came to, he was two hours from the university he was sitting in the front seat, chatting up this guy. He'd been completely blacked out the whole time. But, like, talking, oh, not passed God. out? Yeah, I guess he was, like, a functioning yeah, yeah, hardcore. Yeah. He probably passed out a few times in there. Yeah. But then when he finally came to, he said he was, like, he said he was like looking around, and he sees the highway signs going by, and, like, it's clicking. He's like, huh, this doesn't seem... I don't remember driving two hours to the bar from my buddy's house. Yeah. yeah, and then he started, like, he looked down at his phone, and then it had his home address there, and he was halfway in between West Virginia and New Jersey at that point, and he was like, shit, well, I only got two options. You can let me off here. Yeah. I can close it out. But you then, have three. Let me off here. Turn around. Turn around, or continue to the continue destination. On. $1,600 later, he got dropped off in his front yard. Really? Wow. That dude, and, and he doesn't even deny it. He's like, I fucking hit the wrong address. He's like, I must have. Yeah. Because he's like, I don't know how else the guy would have had my address. So he's like, I don't remember doing it, but I'm also not going to dispute it because the guy drove from West Virginia to New Jersey. Well, it's better than a Dewey. Better than killing yourself or someone else. Yeah, but he missed his whole next day with his buddies in West Virginia. He said they were blowing that him up. Sucks. He never picked up on anything. Like, just done. But that's if that's a, where your life is, you might want to, you might want to take the next night off and pump the brakes anyway. Yeah. Like you might want to say, "That's I'm, a pretty good point." I'm glad to be home. I'm uh, reflect I'm, on what I'm doing. I'm going to sit this one out, guys. Yeah. You have fun in Morgantown <laughs> one more time. I'm going to read tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read the terms and conditions of my Uber app. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read over and over. I think I'll go into work a part time job this weekend. Now yeah. the rest of the weekend, oh, since uh, I need to come up with sixteen hundy. Yeah. Hey, boss, can I uh, can I catch a shift? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't mind working tonight. Yeah, sixteen hundred. I would disparage Uber except like you said, they wouldn't have had it. Well, I mean, they would have his address, but that they wouldn't do that. I don't think that's why would this guy want to yeah. leave go from West Virginia to New Jersey unless he's like, All right, dude, if that's where we're headed. Like Yeah, so Well the Uber driver just do that? Like did the Uber driver know? 
That he was going to Jersey? Once you pick a dude up, then the address does pop up. So he hasn't hit, but what if the Uber driver's like, I can't go fucking four hours. Yeah, I've got to go That home. would have been best case scenario for, for nickel nuts. Cause but what I'm saying, is what? how does that work? The Uber driver has the has the ability to say no. Oh, he does? Yes, and at which point... After he gets the person, though? Yeah, and then he has to cancel, and like I guess he has to like Send redo somebody the, else? Redo the money. So you get in, and the dude's fucking four hours away, and you're like, no, you got to get out. I ain't going yeah. four hours. I guess. Yeah, and then basically... Plus the Uber driver, like he should have been like, hold on. What's going on here? This dude's hammered. It's two in the morning. Yeah. Does he really want to go to Pennsylvania? Right. We're in West Virginia. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. something's crossed up here. Yeah, Jersey. Sorry. Even further. But who knows? Because it's not the kid is like I didn't, I I didn't feel like he did anything wrong. Like, and when I he might have asked the dude like, "Hey yeah, man, take me home. You really want to go to Jersey? That's where I live. That's my home. Like, I right. read the address, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, don't be a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I put the address in. You're there. gonna get two stars. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want to ruin your yeah. your rep. So the dude drove him there. You man. gotta put on some fucking ludicrous too. <laughs> and I'm sure Move, they were bitch. That's it. Yeah. They were trading tunes the whole right. way, having a blast, and then yeah, he comes to and he's like, Jersey Turnpike. That's not good. <laughs> See, I don't get that side of the whole Uber Lyft thing too. Like, do you want that long fare? Because I, I mean, even if I'm working an eight hour shift, do you want? Do you want that four hour one way? You know, like. I don't know. That sounds awful, but I mean, it's a yeah, ton of coin, right? But it's a ton of coin, yeah. And what if you know someone in Jersey? What's I don't the percentage know. split? Do you know about? I I don't. I don't. No know estimate. Offhand. We don't even know if it's if you had to throw a dart. Oh, I mean, I would start at fifty, but I think it probably goes a little up from there. I think okay, it's probably like sixty into your pocket because okay. Uber gets a fee immediately just for the pickup. Yeah, you know, it's like there's like five bucks there, and the driver only gets like a. A, a taste of that so that's where they make their money and then plus you know all the mileage so at that point the guy's probably like fuck yeah that's a payday that's like a grand in my pocket of the 1600 why yeah. not so for a night's work yeah i mean that's solid yeah especially if you know someone on the other end that maybe you could like crash there for the night or, or something. like he's going back to morgantown <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, you don't turn around exactly. and drive back. I got a guy in yeah. Jersey who's trying to get back to Morgantown. <laughs> win, win. Exactly. One of the eyes. Yeah, same dude. Yeah, hey, buddy, drink this. Yeah. Call me in an hour. <laughs> Man, you're, yeah, your friends are in Morgantown. Yeah. Your Pick them up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> exactly. Shotgun. Your buddy just called the blonde you were talking to, said she wanted you. Right well, now. Okay, we're going back. Yeah. <laughs> she said you have four hours to get here. Hit it. Yeah. Move, bitch. That's 3200 <laughs> Jackpot. Oh. And then I saw I guess my, I can't be too mad then. Well, so there's a new scam going on overseas. I guess this one came out of China that I was pretty excited about. So Uber excited scam? about getting scammed or like this you want to do it yourself? This scam's pretty bright. Really? So when if you cancel, like say you, you call the Uber, right? And then the person says, Yeah, I'll take it, and they're on their way, and then you cancel it. Then there's still now there's now like a five dollar charge yes. that goes that goes through, and a little of that is yours. Some of it's Uber's, right? So, in, in other words, if you say I'm getting out, they still charge you five bucks. Yeah. So you you say I want an Uber, a driver says yes, I'll do it, and then they're on their way. Yeah. And then you say fuck you, I don't want an Uber anymore. Staying. Uber goes okay, that's fine. Five dollar charge, no harm, no foul. At what point do they charge you for that? As soon as you accept it. So I've gotten away with it before where it's like a long time and like I haven't been charged. But I've also like if they're close, I have been charged. But I don't know how the China rules work. I'm sure it's a little less regulated over there. So there's a group of Uber drivers that have found a genius loophole. Their picture, they take a picture of like some like zombie or some like fucked up horror monster and make yeah. that their picture. Yeah. And then what happens is people say, I want the Uber. Then they see their driver they freak out and they cancel it and these dudes oh, these dudes just make money and so they sit there all day in populated areas and accept 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 and never go anywhere never go anywhere <laughs> making that's dollars off smart. each one of them that's, yeah, that's what smart. i said i said this is actually a really good i've never good scam. canceled i've never canceled after seeing someone but i have been like oh, that's but have you not... ever seen someone with blood coming down their face no. and like a fucking gun 
You know, like it's like Yeah, ooh. I think that's something that Uber would pick up on. You could probably just make a crazy eyes look. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and Uber said they're trying to figure it out because this has turned into this this scam in this whole area. Like, yeah, because over here, like you have to have a legit picture of yourself. Like as a writer, you have to have a picture of yourself. Like I I mean I haven't tried a goofy picture, but I would assume they'd be like, nah, you got But I guess be you like, could change it out, right? Like you start guess, with one yeah. and then you change it. And then after a few complaints. Turn yourself to like a beautiful blonde and you get picked up all the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I thought that was a genius scam. And it's then, making a dollar each, though, right? Yeah, but over there, a dollar is great, right? I mean, I guess. For not doing anything? For just sitting there on the couch drinking beer going to I mean, depending on how. But you'd have to have a hundred of those that, for the money it would take you to drive around and get people. Depending on how fast they're coming, though, it could be. They could literally be coming one after another. Yeah, apparently they kind of like wait till the right, like the, the time where everyone. Yeah, like a Friday night when, when there's you, demand yeah. and they go to an area. Where they know there's gonna be a ton of demand, they sit there. It seems like a lot of effort to do nothing. Most scams are. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, it doesn't take much effort to drive. Yeah, you're just getting in your car. But the more you drive, the less money you make. Right? More gas, more wear and tear on your vehicle. So, but they're making nothing. They're making a dollar a clip. Yeah, they're just making the little one. But they're still having to go through the effort of going to get in their car, sit there for eight fucking hours. Well, at least turn on the app. And just wait. They can sit there playing yeah, video could, games. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you that's a good yeah, you live in the area? Yeah, yeah. Turn the app on. You're sitting on your couch eating Doritos, playing whatever just kids making play. making dollars yeah. all day. Yeah. Dollars at a time. Yeah. It's got to work. Somebody's doing it. I mean, they're doing it to so the somebody's point. Somebody's got to accept you, I would imagine, at one point. Yeah. And then what happens yeah, there? And then, yeah, right. and then you're like, shit, I got to get off the couch. You got to put yeah. your Cyclops on, eye on, <laughs> right. and like, drive over there and freak them out there. Yeah, because they did say that, like, some people have, like, waited, and, like, the car never moves. Uh, and then they're like, hey, he's not coming. Oh, and then really? the account does get shut down, and then it's like, but they just keep popping up and running this little scam. And then they get nothing when they don't move, like, in the, that ride yeah, they get dropped. nothing. Yeah. Yeah, they get nothing at that point. So... Kind like of a, it, kind of a, an interesting scam, though. I, it's, a, it's a different kind of loophole. That I saw. So those were the two Uber stories, though. It made me think of you this week. You know? no, yep, and they both suck. Well, they're Uber right. sucks. Like, no, not the story suck, but I'm just saying we I, we have. What are the what's the ratio of great Uber stories to the positive Uber stories to negative ones? I'd say there's more positive that you just don't hear about positive, right? Yeah, I got a guy get me to the airport when I was hungover in New Orleans. I was pretty excited about that guy. Yeah. He knocked it out of the park. That guy knew knew his. Well, stuff. that's true. I guess there's thousands you hear, of. You don't hear the good stuff. All you hear is the bad. Well, I'm sure a lot of people too just roll with it, like we've talked about. I mean, you get you get stuck for some extra money, or you have a bad experience. You're gonna, you kind of need them. I oh mean, yeah. You need, and they, there are other apps and there are other services, but they're the Xerox of car services. I mean, that's you know they got their name out there, and they're they're the big one. I just dated your ass. And I was listening to last week's, and that was some dated ass shit too. We're like, we should get a CD player in our car. Like, Fuck. <laughs> should I really just get Bluetooth? <laughs> Fucking everyone's yelling at the phone. Like, <laughs> of course you just get Bluetooth, yeah. dork. Right. You get Spotify, you, play you nerd. Fucking CDs. The fuck. Oh, that's something I was going to talk to you about. I was listening to that. Okay. Spotify. You get every song, so you don't have to buy music. But do you get every song? It's like they have like yes. a huge amount of songs. So actually, I was away this this weekend. What are the odds? Ask my, ask my wife. She'll tell you all about it. <laughs> but I was away this weekend, and I decided to put my buddy to the test because he had Spotify, and I was like, yeah. let's see what you got here, you know? And I like prattled off some songs that I thought would be tough to get. Like I did Myrtle Beach by Sonny Ledford, right? Yeah. Because I figured eh, that's kind of a- Motherfucking Myrtle Beach. Yeah, it's kind of a weird song. Like it wouldn't be- in, Sure enough, it had it. So now I am having to like. And what's that run? It's whatever. Ten bucks a month, right? Is it? I thought it was less than that. It might be. But I mean, you're spending ten bucks an album. And I. This is how I justify it to myself: is that I own them forever. The day you stop paying Spotify, you all lose your, music your album. Goes away. Yeah. Yes. So you got to pay ten bucks a month forever to have yeah. access to all that music. Whereas I just buy it and then 
I can go away and I still have it. I mean, that's you do have it downloaded somewhere. Yeah. So actually, the way Google Music works, I can download it from the cloud and like keep it on my hard drive. Yeah. And I own it, so I can burn it. I can do. Brendan hadn't made you a mix CD yet. <laughs> no, dude, he's good at it, man. Not since '94. The best. But that's the only thing is like I feel like they've got you. When this is a subscription yeah. service. Mm-hmm. Are you, uh, I know you're, but you're right, man. It, you have access to everything. I mean, it, it makes sense. I'm just dated like that. Yeah. I know you have a record player and you've been buying some vinyl lately. Yes. I can't, I still can't wrap my head around that. Like, I don't, I can't understand why it's coming back because the short attention span everyone has, I don't understand putting an album on and listening, listening to it. And, I used to be the guy that had vinyl and listened to music like that, and the thought of doing that sounds almost like torture to me. Well, no, it's not coming back in the way that it's like every. It's not coming back. It's not to like mainstream. replacing Spotify. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, but most people vinyl, still want what we want. No, but, there's but still a, a niche of people that want. Whereas it for they're nostalgia. not making CDs, they're still produce. They're starting to produce vinyl again, like yeah. new music on vinyl, Absolutely. which is which is insane to me. And the you the, go to I, concerts and like. They're less likely to have a CD these days as much as they'll have vinyl and then with the download. So the the whole premise of like sitting down, I guess, I guess, I don't know. I guess you didn't have a choice. You used to sit down and put a record on. You would listen to it or dance to it or whatever you did. And I, I enjoyed that. But I guess people don't do that. They put it on, then they're probably getting on their phone and dicking off with stuff. And you I don't mean, get to skip around. And that's yeah. kind of... I think that's what some people like, but you're right, man. It's a giant pain. Part of me ass. feels like it's nostalgic to people that didn't live with it. That's yes. the strangest part about it. It's the people oh, that makes sense because it's younger. But it's the people that never had it. Yeah, so that they're like, let me check back. this out. Yeah, but I think that's strange. I think that makes sense. Like we don't, we don't see a reason to bring it back except for you because we because lived we it. lived it. We're yeah. like, oh, I know. It sounds like this. Whereas yeah. they're like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Well, audio files say it sounds. They like the sound of the vinyl yeah. more than the, yeah, c- the that clarity argument of the is CD. Because if you remember back in the 80s, everyone was like, oh, my God, this is how it's supposed to be heard. Listen to CDs. It's, it's true yeah. quality. You hear everything. And now it's like we're going back and going, that low def stuff sounds better. It's yeah. strictly a preference thing. But if you want to get down to like brass tacks, a CD is better. Yeah. You hear every nuance of the instrument. Yeah. You hear yeah. the fingers sliding down the damn guitar. Well, if you if you're listening to the right people, because music's made differently now too, where sure. everything's laid in over top of other stuff. You don't just have bands in a studio playing and recording it, and they've they've fucked up five hundred times today, and this is their five hundred first time, and that's the track they lay down. It's like, oh, the guitarist was in here last week laying down his lick. Then the vocal guy's coming in next week. He's going to sing his part. Like, they're not even in the same damn room. You're going to mash that shit. Exactly. You have some dudes that it's one dude, the whole band. Oh, yeah. Because they'll just, all right, I'm going to lay the drum track, now I'm going to lay the guitar. And yes. Yeah. I mean, you can you can do that now with the way, the way the studios are, for sure. Actually, so do you, you listen can, to a lot of your vinyl? On the weekends. It's, uh, it's, it's a, a background thing, right? It's a labor of love. It is. But, like, as soon as I get home on the weekends, I do go in and put on, like, put on an album and let it let it play through but at the same time i just bought like the google music to hook up there so that i can i can play stream my music all over the house you know so it's like i i do both so you throw on vinyl and you're like making dinner hanging out hanging out with the fam and you just got to kick it in the background for the most part but i do find that if i'm ever going to go sit down in that room and listen to music like it's the vinyl it's not like when i'm bluetoothing yeah it or for some reason. That's that's more of my background. I will sit down and do it. But it's a giant pain in the ass. I mean, there's no yeah. there's no two ways about it. So how do we feel about the whole Google listening to everything and just the way that, you know, all that stuff, they basically own our lives. I don't can we like get it. away from it at all? I don't like it. But what can we do it. about it? I don't use it. I, well, yeah, I mean, you, what I'm saying is you, well, your phone's you, already you, doing you, it. They, well, they do it for you. Yeah, but I, I turn off Siri and I, tr- I don't have Alexis and all yeah, that, that stuff. Yeah, don't like, matter. They still, what I'm saying is they're still tracking you and everything that you do. Yes. But what do you, can you do about it? You'd have to not carry a phone. Yeah. Right. A smartphone. Yeah, you have to not carry a phone because that phone gives you access. But to have you ever everything. tried to like get away from like a Google account? It's a fucking nightmare. Like, go try now to like log into Chrome. And not log in as Brendan. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I have like like three different Gmail addresses. Yeah, and on like on this computer over here, like when I log in, it's like, who are you right now? And right. it's keeping different profiles, but it knows that they're all the same person. But yeah. we all see that as, oh, that's just them being convenient. Yeah, they're looking out for me. Yeah. No, you you are the commodity. Yes. Your information is how they make money. And that's But that's, did you have a problem with it? I I used to have more of a problem with it than I I do now. Now I'm kind of just like it is what it is. I mean, they I don't know how to get away from it. I understand that I have no privacy, and I don't think anyone out there should no think one does. They yeah. have privacy. Anyone who thinks they have privacy is sorely mistaken. Yeah, so no, saw, no privacy. I don't know if I talked about this, but I saw. I may have talked about it if I did. Whatever. The dude who did the walked around the city with the phones that were never turned on. Did I tell you about that? No, I don't no. Think so, so what happened? It was an episode of a guy who had gotten two phones straight out of the box, never been connected to any never network. Had, or no anything. network. Like never. He hey, this is Verizon's took them out of the box. Took them out of the box. Never hooked up to a Wi-Fi network. Never nothing. Um, Did he kept, turn them on? Turned them on. Okay. But kept one in airplane mode, just the phone. Okay. No, hey, you're who, this is your person. Never logged into Google or nothing. Just out of the box, turned on the phones, put one in airplane mode. And let the walked other one around, do its thing. Yeah. Walked around D.C., came back two hours later and had some kind of a uh, software that he hooked in and could see what was going on and what was going to Google. And it was the fucking everything. The craziest shit. And knew where he'd been. Where he'd been, wh- what place he was, how long he was there, when he did this. And it was every single thing. Eat in the plane that was in airplane mode had everything the exact same. They, so the airplane mode didn't do what it was supposed to do. So it's still pinging towers and doing all that? Yes. Then, even though it's in airplane mode? Yeah. I'll be damned. No, that's a little, that's yeah, a little it, disturbing. It was sending it to Google, too, despite this person not having a Google account. Yeah, because one day you're going to link up something and you'll yeah. go, okay, that's who that was. Right. So they collect all that information. There's a way you can actually go to Google and you can listen to conversations that your phone's been recording. Yeah. And Google always says that they do that just because they want to get better at voice recognition. They want to make their AI do yeah. better about understanding stuff. But they record everything and you can They're actually They're doing go it because the it. fucking, well, they want to do it for ad reasons and they want to do it for crime. It's bigger than that, but the ad reasons is probably the number one. Yeah, because that's the money. Yeah, I mean, that's what I sell. And it's so I'm shocked at, at the stuff we hear. We have ads right now or we have the capability where I can, if someone has a, a TV campaign that they're running, I can actually, your phone, regardless of what you tell it to do, it picks up on audio cues from your TV and goes, okay, cool, the commercial's running, and then I can send the same ads to any device on the Wi-Fi. So if, no matter how they log on, I'm matching it. I can also do, if a competitor's ad comes on, the phone hears it, and now everything on the Wi-Fi, I'll be like, no, 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 you should be using us. Really? Yeah, and that's perfectly normal. That's something I sell for pennies. Wow. The ability to do that. So imagine what the NSA has, right? Yeah. That's what I'm selling for pennies. They've got everything. I mean, you remember that scene? In, it was one of those Batman movies where, like, Morgan Freeman, like, pulled up all the phones of Batman. I do remember trying. that. That shit's real. Yeah. Like, that's, that's re- they were they were just joking around and, and putting out, like, look at this great idea. No, nah, the government can tap in and listen. Turn cameras to, on a whole nine. Yeah, and figure out, okay, here's where the conversations are happening. Here's where the buzz is. They can narrow down to areas like that. That's, yeah. That's very real, and it's. It's really sketchy. Well, if the government's doing all this, why aren't we stopping some of the crazy that's going on around here? We do stop some of it. You know, you don't hear yeah. about how much we do stop, but there's so much information. It's it's data overload, yeah. and how do you how do you sift through it and find oh that marker in yeah. real time yeah. is indicative of this horrific event? Yeah, move in. It's it's almost impossible to to do that now. Now, yeah. sure, they'll get better about it, but it's like in retrospect, we can go back and see the patterns. Well, have you heard um, some comedians are uh, doing, uh, and maybe concerts are doing it too, where you go to see them and you have to put your phone in a bag that prevents like calls coming in and all that. So, so basically, kills your phone. So, 
should we have that at home? So when you're not on your phone, you can slot it in there and the and Big Brother isn't listening? I think you could set yeah. your house up to act like that, like block out yeah. the signals. I'm sure you could do that. Even one of the Wi-Fi companies uh, has got it set up where you can like turn off all your Wi-Fi for a little bit and like, shut the house down. But that still doesn't change what Ely's talking about. Where the phone that's in airplane mode yeah. is still picking up on everything you do. Yeah. And every last bit of it is tracked and sold. Mm-hmm. I mean That's the scary part. And I heard apps are doing that too. When you approve apps to use your microphone for whatever app or camera, like they're taking that, The apps that- are actually the worst because they have access to all that stuff and the apps are made by all these different people. So like Google's insidious because it's in the operating system, right? So it's like it's always there doing it. But as soon as you get your first app, that's built on someone else's software development kit. And you say, yes, I accept these permissions. Now some third party that you don't know who the fuck they are yeah. now has access to all the same they stuff have less, that Google has. They have less of a rep they need to maintain. Like yeah. Google wants to – they want it, but they're going to try to stay on the up and up, I would assume, for the most part because, I mean, they want to make the dollars. But you are you got some weird random – you know, game app or something, and That's, they probably the don't ones. have, but they don't have as much to lose. But won't there? And we may be there, but or we're close to the point to where the title switch on that to where Google won't care because they know that no one can do anything to them. That's true too. Like they're too big to fail at yeah, this point. No, like yeah. I'm not afraid of the people anymore. What are you going to not Google something? Right. I mean, speaking of like Google is an, it's its own adjective now. Like Google's on. And is Apple as bad as Google? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're both trying to dominate the world, and they both want to get AI to the point that it can do whatever. And until they know everything about you, I don't think you can get AI to that next level. They must be working really closely together because I think Google's Google does more with ads. Yeah, Apple doesn't really focus on the ads so much. You're right. But they do sell some information, but they're not. Google built their entire you know, foundation around ad revenue that's what they were going to do so they want information they were going to help you get to content because they knew that's what you wanted but they were going to sell ads when you got to the content and they needed to know everything about you to make sure the right ads are in the right place apple doesn't have that same model they always wanted to sell hardware based on the software yeah yeah you wanted to fall in love with their ecosystem and move forward google was smart they said okay they've already won that so we'll just do an open source software yeah. that everyone can get in on, and then it'll take up the rest of the market share. Smart move. But right. theirs was all based on advertising. So. Yeah. It is, I do wonder, you're probably right, does Apple collect as much? And if they don't, do they stand a chance in the grand scheme against Google? I mean, they, they ain't hurting. <laughs> no, but it's early on. Yeah. Like, we're just... We're just becoming this thing that's all tied to technology. Our our brains are shifting. You know, Joe I mean, Rogan always talks about that that we're we're coming out of the cocoon, right? You'll be able and to that, mind read in no time. Yeah, that down yeah. the but road there can be, we're going to be there can be two players, two major players in a market. I mean, they can right, both but, do their own thing and both succeed oh, very yeah. very well. I mean, but take all right. What's the next? What do you think the next big leap is? We haven't had any big leaps in a long time. People think we're advancing super fast, but in the technology cell phone industry, even TVs, we haven't. There's been no real big breakthroughs. In that world? Or are you saying where's technology going in general? Like what's the next big thing in the cell phone world that you think? That I I don't know. It has to be AI. I mean, it has to get to the point where AI works so well that you just can't live without it. But what is it going to be? How is it going to interact or interface with us? Well, I think you need to get the cell phone to the point that it's no longer something you have to take out of your pocket. Of course. It's not going to... I don't think it's going to be glasses because those are fucking doofy. Who the fuck's going to wear them everywhere? It's going to either be imprinted on your iris. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. But that's where it's headed. It'll become just part of you. And once that happens, now you're... Now imagine when them glitches go down and you can't see colors. Like that shit will suck. <laughs> yeah. But that's basically Or you where literally it's lose eyesight because you have some right. jacked up iris implant. Yeah. That, cornea implant or something. But the next big leap is that whole CRISPR thing they're talking about with being able to like find the DNA strand in you that's causing the problems, 
tweak the one little part of it, put it back in, your body assimilates it and then goes, oh, yeah, we're just going to fight that cancer. That's not, we don't want that. Yeah. Or color blindness. I mean, you can yeah. fix that with CRISPR. I mean, it's crazy. I know. Where that's going. They the say, whole AI thing in general is just going to be nuts. But and I think if you get realize. to that point where you're starting to modify DNA, right? You're doing that. You're changing things. Well, then couldn't you theoretically change the DNA to be able to now interact with Wi-Fi? Internet, yeah. In general, oh, right? Like Just as easily, if you can tell your body, hey, you no longer have cerebral palsy because we found that strain. Well, then what's to say that we can't interact with our phone directly yeah. by, by fixing some ability to pick up on electro yeah, that's frequencies. Right. I'm getting down a road here, but I mean, that could be it, right? Because we're seeing this come up on the health side. CRISPR yeah. is going to change the world. In in 10 years, they're going to be getting they're going to be wiping things off the earth, like right. diseases off the earth. Well, then phones will get to that point. Why can't you just marry the two? Bring the two together. I listened to a really good podcast, Sam Harris's on AI, the recent one. Did you hear that money chance? I did not. So he had some AI wizard on there, and they were talking about the problems with AI, obviously. Um, and he he brought up a really yes. good point that a lot of people that I had never thought about, that a lot of people say about AI, they're like, we can just build AI and then turn it off. Bullshit. If it ever gets crazy, and that's total bullshit. And it, but I used to think that you could like that made sense in my head when someone if was like, "If something's actually going to be AI, like really get it to that point, yeah, then it's self aware. That's true AI, right? right? Yeah, exactly. So well, you're, it's not going to let you turn it off, right? I'm exactly. not going to let you turn me off, right? If you pull a gun out on me right now, I'm going to then fight. Yeah, and the dude. Um, so to make this point, he bet these people. He was like, "I'm." What we're going to do is meet in this room. I'm going to pretend to be the super AI. You're going to be you. And if I don't get you to turn me off in 30 minutes, I'll give you 50 bucks. And every person that tried it within 30 minutes was like, I have let him out. And part, part of the thing was that they couldn't tell anyone how he got them out. And his point was that, if something is exponentially smarter than you, yeah. you'll never know what they're going to do. It's like yeah. a monkey trying to say that human will never be able to do this to me. Yeah. You can't think of what it's going to do to convince you to keep it there. Yeah. So he was able to do these things to get yeah. these people who thought that they would be able to do it to do it. He never told them how. They never said how. Yeah. But it was he clearly did it. You know? Did you ever watch Ex Machina? I did. That movie was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Like the way it mind fucked you at the end, and it was like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So that was a good flick. It will find a way, you know. But, but I mean, that's a really good industry or just thing to start following, um, because there's that's going to be the the next big thing that's going to either make us or break us because they've got to do everything right and in the right steps to make sure that it doesn't. Well, and they say whichever country crazy. gets to AI first though is now the superpower, like yeah. regardless of what else you have. And so America, we tend to like hold some of these things back, right? Like we don't want, ooh, I don't know about stem cells, like morally we got to obligate. Other countries are like fuck that. Yeah. We're going down the road of stem cells. We've got cloned all kinds of things like we just do it. Like yeah. there's no so they get far ahead of us. If we allow China or any one of these countries to f get further ahead of us, we're fucked. It's done. It's over. Because once they have AI, they can control our electronics. They can control everything. So when you get to that point, that's the next superpower. But then the problem is that superpower, that doesn't have a nation. Yeah. And that's, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No AI goes, oh, I'm Chinese AI. Bullshit. You're just AI. Right. So... We'll get there. I know we're going down pot talk, but it's like <laughs> it's very interesting stuff to me. It I is. totally agree with you. It's like the world's changing; it's changing fast. But so I don't know that it's going to pop up in cell phones. And are we going to? I mean, you're not going to convince everyone to stop the growth. No, of AI. no, it'll never but stop. Why do you think they charge dick sticks to put the Google Home in your house to put the Amazon Alexa? Yeah, yeah. it's because They're that helps giving them. that away. That helps them get so much closer. To AI, because now they have an understanding of everything you do on such a level that's no longer just tied to your phone. They're now in your home. They're on top of it. They're hearing everything. They right. hear how you interact. They hear what you do. They hear the shit you don't want anyone to know. They know that shit. Yeah. 
you know, they hear me on the couch late at night. <laughs> they right. know they, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy in 104 is at it again. <laughs> yep. I swear that guy's in the control booth. Third time today. In Seattle. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they know the things you don't want to know, want to want you to know. Oh yeah, of course they do. It's it's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, it's pretty fucking crazy. nuts, man. It's gonna move quick. So uh, totally, totally different subject. You uh, you just you just mentioned something to me, off air. I, dude, I'm getting psyched about brunch weekend. Hell yes! I'm like, glad we're is, involved. It is coming. Yeah, next week. Do we, is it next week? Yeah. That the uh, the crew from from it's told over brunch, who are the ones who actually built out this whole freaking brunch weekend, here which in is hell of impressive. It is, dude. It's every grown restaurant, oh, yeah. every restaurant in town is involved in brunch week weekend. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So next week we get to hear all about what's going on with brunch weekend here in Richmond. Yeah, Sarah's coming in. The places that are going to be participating it's going to be sweet man so yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to hanging out with them and are we going to try to still do a uh a yeah remote? we're doing the remote on a brunch weekend uh at uh social 52 that'll be cool I, that's I, what march the 24th 24th i think saturday is saturday 24th. i've heard that place has a uh a pretty sweet like bloody mary bar they have a great on. they have a great uh setup um so i'm looking forward to it i was actually talking to a uh one of my kids' teachers in Social 52 was one of her uh, hot spots to go. Apparently, so, that's uh, the spot yeah. too. So I'm excited. But yeah, yeah, we'll have we'll have them. Is it just Sarah? Is she bringing Casey? I don't know. I got to check. I think Casey's coming. Okay, so check we'll it. Uh, check out their blog. It's a great blog, well written stuff, and it's basically they just tell. Uh, it's actually, a pretty funny blog. Yeah, tell funny stories like as told over brunch. I mean, that's the whole premise. And uh, I, I, I'm a reader. It's uh, it's really good. I check it out. And uh, we've had them in here before, so go back and uh, look for that episode. They're uh, they're hilarious, and uh, we're gonna, gonna uh, have them night. out here. It's gonna be a long night. I just yeah. saw that that we also have something going on at Penny Lane that night. We do. So it's gonna be brunch, and then Penny Lane later on the twenty fourth. Yeah. So that's an S show. That's an S show. Yeah, it will be a shit show, say the least. So yeah, that'll be a long day. But come out to Social Fifty Two. We talked Brett about the plumber. It. Oh, okay. Yeah, birthday. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be a long night, to say the least. Come out to Social 52. We'll get you on the mic. Yeah, what time are we getting there? Have we figured that out yet? Haven't haven't locked that down, but no it'll, be, well, it'll be early. It'll be before noon. I just assume that, that when the As Told Over Brunch crew gets here, that they'll just know all the details for me, even though Boom. that's our thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> just, this is when you should be there. Yeah. I just okay. assume they're in charge. Yeah. I mean, they've managed to pull together... A few restaurants the first year, yeah. a few more, and now it's like every Selling major shirts restaurant. shirts and doing all kinds of stuff, man. It's it's impressive. Can't argue with the uh, the work ethic on those 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 young whippersnappers. God bless them. <laughs> you just said whippersnapper. <laughs> God bless them. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll check in next week, and we'll uh, we'll be we'll be talking about that. So hopefully uh, hopefully you tune in next week, get some details, and then maybe we'll be able to catch up with you uh, soon thereafter. If you guys have not had a chance to review the podcast, I've been getting a lot of complaints that the iTunes interface is just miserable trying to get reviews in I got there. a complaint from a listener about Google Play. Can you even review on Google Play? I don't I'm know. I'm not sure. I don't either. Keep keep up the good fight, I think iTunes people. is the one that matters, though, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's the one that it, it leverages the the reviews more right. so than the yeah, algorithm. Yeah. So, yeah, if you get a chance, please Alga do. Who? <laughs> Al- algorithm. I don't know him. Now, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you got topics, as always, hit us up at inside the pallet house at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you, hear what you got going on, what you want us to be talking about. You can always hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at ITPH Podcast. We'd love to hear from you there. And uh, is that all of them? Did I hit them all? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Facebook. Twitter, oh, yeah, obviously, Instagram. go to the Facebook page, reach on how to us. We would, inside the pallet house. We would love to hear Congrats from you. Congrats to Thomas, by the way. Well, that's all I'll say, but yeah, bomber. Yeah, one of our buddies just decided to uh, commit. Yeah, commit. good for him. It's going down that long road to uh, half your shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Enjoy Welcome it. Welcome aboard. No doubt. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. We certainly do appreciate having you here, man. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers.
That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? 